We want power, but we want reliability is our number one goal with this kind of airplane. We took it one step further with an external reservoir with rebound adjustability. Cooling is performance, and you could be 7,000 horsepower, but if you can't keep it cool in a sustained climb, to get even more low pressure into this NACA when we get extreme heat. It's a beautiful day here at Oshkosh. It's Thursday morning, just after the night show, and I'm seeing in front of the Backcountry Super Cub, and I wanna show you up close all the way around what this thing is made of. Kyle Bushman is gonna tell us all about it, so let's get to it. All right, so my first question is, do you start with another airframe, or do you actually go from something completely new from the beginning? So this is a completely scratch design built in solid work. So it's as close as a 172 is to the right flyer. Everyone says that it's a, oh, it's a Super Cub. It's a four place Super Cub. There's no parts that started as a Super Cub. It's all built in solid works and everything is CNC cut, CNC routed, CNC milled or lathed. And it's a clean slate design. It's just performs like a Super Cub. And so that's the easiest thing for people to grab to, but it's a 206 size aircraft. It's a very large airplane. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. okay. How wide is the fuselage? 52 inches wide. And so, I mean, it's wider than a 206. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. And obviously it has a nice big plenty of leg room in the back seat yep. for a couple guys. Yeah, so the there's other four place style Super Cubs that have been built, kits that have started to be produced. But the linchpin or the weak point is they're using a four cylinder engine. And so they can't get the CG stretched out enough to make the rear seats big enough. And so as this is a six cylinder, a uh, six cylinder IO 540 Lycoming, 330 horse, we were able to scale the airplane in a way that gave full-size people room, plus baggage. Yeah. And then it also, with the higher gross weight, we're 1750 empty, 3600 max gross. That high gross weight, we needed the big engine to, to do it. And if you, the, the downside to a four-cylinder when you're really working them up to the 250 range, if you lose a cylinder, you're losing 25% of your power. And so it's really noticeable at gross to maintain altitude, it's hard. Mm -hmm. With a six cylinder, you lose a cylinder, you're losing a sixth of your power, so it's a lot less of a hit. Yeah. Um, which is all stuff you think about with high utility aircraft. Yeah, okay. So moving beyond the back seat, we got a 50 some inch white cabin, wider yep. than a 206, yep. plenty of leg room. Yep. Now behind that, with this impressive baggage area. How so that, that? that goes back another six foot six behind or seven feet behind the rear seat back. Yep. And I can completely lay side by side two people behind the rear seat. And that yeah. becomes our cargo area. Yeah. And it's like a lot of times you hear people are moving back seats. In this aircraft, there's no reason to. You just have such a big baggage yeah. that you just don't have to. Yeah. Awesome, man. I love the all the skylight, all the, the visibility, yep. the huge doors. Just it's you know up front by right where your legs are yep. there. Um, yeah, I mean it's like the best of everything all put together. Yep. And yep. one of the things about these doors that we've switched from previous designs is these doors, we used to use screws. We switched to an all glue system because we were getting we were getting rattling. Okay. But all the rattling went away because we glued these on now. So it's just a solid bond yep, all the way exactly. around. Exactly. So. Awesome, okay. All right, what's uh, what's the deal with the suspension? I mean, it looks pretty impressive. Let me so. grab one more and I'll, sh I'll show you the newest one. So this was the first swing at the new suspension Tony at TK1 Racing built for us. Okay, yep. Um, our biggest challenge is we're upping to a 3,600 pound gross weight and an extreme off airport environment where we need this kind of suspension. Well, it's never been developed yet for airplane use. So Tony developed this first set for us, which met what we wanted. He took it one step further with an external reservoir with rebound adjustability. Okay. So we can adjust the rebound of this shock externally as we go to flight testing and start seeing what we like. Yeah. The previous designs, you always had to send the shock in, get it revalved, get it get changed. Okay. Now we accept tunability with this new design. You can do it like on in the field basically, yeah. Exactly. So you have the 540. Is there anything that has been done other than, I see three 330 horsepower, so yep. we got a fuel injected 540 yep. Lycoming here. Kenny at Lycon built the engine for us. It's ported, it's polished, it has all their magical coatings on all the rockers, valves, everything you could. Um, it's high compression and it's got a custom built exhaust. And so he's, we got dyno sheets and all that stuff from Kenny at Lycon. With these high utility aircraft, we have to draw the line somewhere. With these airplanes, they're going to such remote areas that sure you can get, you hear of other race airplanes that are 400 horse and all this other stuff, but 
We're running magnetos and a normal fuel injection on a known 540, which has thousands of hours in the fleet, oh, yeah. because we want something that's reliable. We want power, but we want reliability is our number one goal with this kind of airplane. Obviously, that Cowan is built around this particular engine. Yep, and there's a lot of unique things about this cowling design. Uh, one thing where cooling is performance, and you could be 7,000 horsepower, but if you can't keep it cool in a sustained climb, you're not gonna be able to use it. You're gonna have to pull power, reduce climb rate. Yep. This whole cowling was designed as a lifting body. All okay. of this yep. radius is all designed for when you're in a hard climb, the air's gonna hit and funnel in to our plenum. Okay. And so we're 330 horse, but we have the ability to cool it in a sustained hard climb. We have this NACA scoop on the side. That's actually our oil cooler. Okay. And we have an electric fan mounted on the back side of the cooler to get even more low pressure into this NACA when we get extreme heat. That fan kicks on automatically with a temperature sensor and it draws even more air through that cooler for us. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Good deal. So this propeller is a three blade Kato. And this is really a intermediate step to the finished product on the airplane. Okay. Craig is designing a constant speed hub for us with this same blade design. Because okay. right now we're fixed pitch, so we're limited to, we get amazing takeoffs or great crews. We can't do both at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so when you load the airplane up, you don't want to take off at 2000 RPM to get yeah. a great cruise number. So yeah. right now, this is a great prop. We were getting kind of our most efficient Lena Peak was 9.7 gallons an hour at 100 miles an hour. And if we wanted to go faster and up it up to like 115, 110, our fuel burn went up to significant. It was 14, 15, 16 gallons an hour. And so it's better to run at Lena Peak and get the fuel out of it. Yeah. But when we have that constant speed, we're very confident we're going to be 115 to 125 final cruise okay. on a, a reasonable fuel burn. Yeah. And while we're talking about performance, what kind of performance are we looking at for like a takeoff and landing distance for this equipment? So I, was, I flew at Sodbuster Stowe Competition, won first place in the touring class with the airplane, flew here and consistently at 8,000 foot DAs when I was flying the airplane up at altitude when we were up high, we were doing 200 foot takeoffs and landings no matter what we did. Uh, it was just always 200 feet. Okay. I knew when I came down to sea level we were going to be significantly better. Yeah. My head, I was hoping for 100 foot takeoffs and landings. Yeah. And actually, sure enough, Sodbusters and here were able to achieve some 100 foot takeoffs and landings, that's which is that's pretty great just, for an airplane that's that 1750 is, empty. That is crazy impressive. Yep. Real quick, and we'll go walk around here in a second, check out this baggage area, yep. and we can do a little show and tell. But what kind of slats, what's the slat set up on these? So these slats. Everything in aviation is a compromise. You can't have everything. The simplicity of these slats is they bolt onto the leading edge, very easy to attach. Yeah. They're fixed. They rotate on the front pivot point. And so when you achieve that high angle, we're trying to get camber on our wing. I mean, you watch birds come in and land, they're cupping their wings. Yeah. That's what we're trying to do here. And so with these oversized flaps, we're trying to camber this wing as much as we can, get a huge under camber yep. to slow it down. And you gotta think all the high lift devices work together in unison. So slats typically drive a high angle of attack to get into their high angle and get really slowed down. Mm -hmm. Well, if you bring on flaps, you can reduce that angle. And so we put this huge flap on there so we can achieve that benefit of the slat, but still have the forward visibility. And then you. if you come here, we have another thing. It's a fixed slot on top of the flap because we needed more airflow to get pulled. We have this big cambered wing and the air was burbling behind our flaps. Mm, yeah. So what we did is we put a slot here to force that high speed air. It's call it three to one, four to one. That air goes into big, comes out on the backside in a small hole and it shoots down the back. And that encourages that top layer to turn that corner on top of that wing for us. Okay, I got you. <laughs> That's awesome. I actually didn't notice that when I was walking yeah, by. I don't yeah. I just like, oh yeah, it's a flap. Sure. And it's three bays. That's pretty wild, but then, yeah. So three bays, there's yeah. a lot of benefits to three bay. The inside portion of flaps always get beat up. The fabric gets destroyed, rocks and all that kind of thing. Each section is identical. If you damage one section, you can just buy one and put it anywhere. You can have one on the shelf if you, if you wanted. Um, yeah, they're all identical and ease of manufacturing also. If you make them in shorter sections, it's a lot easier to final trim. Yeah. We can adjust these rods here 
and we can actually trim the airplane. We can move these slats, just sli or flaps slightly up or down mm -hmm. on the trailing edge and help us trim the airplane. All, there's all kinds of benefits to this section. Well, let's take a quick look at this baggage. With a high utility aircraft, priority number one is an oversized baggage door. You don't want to put, you don't want a baggage door that's this big. I mean, it's, it's nice, but if you want to put a lot of stuff in and out, you need an oversized baggage door. So this fuselage was designed for the full purpose of having a door that's usable. Yeah. You can get stuff in and out easily. You got to poke your head in there. And... Yeah. Yep. Yeah. On the back side here, you can see that this slot, you can see how we're pulling that top air down with this front, like four to one, down to one. So say it's 40 mile an hour air. Now we're accelerating that at rapid speeds across the back side of this flap. Awesome. And then the tail, this is something that it's kind of a, it's hard to, you build a brand new airplane. If you don't make incremental or small changes on it as you go, it's hard to say benefits. Mm -hmm. But something we're starting to experiment with is airfoil shaped tail feathers. Okay. Um, if you develop an airplane to have a huge center of gravity range, you're gonna need trim. So this trim window, significantly larger than a normal cub, you can kind of compare it to the normal cubs, probably four fingers width. Okay. Well, we're going to have CG shifts in this airplane that are pretty significant. Oh, yeah. And so we have to be able to combat that with trim. Yep. And so we get this big range here. Airfoil is helping us. So, where's the best place for somebody to get more information about this? Because this is uh, something that's going to be available for people, right? Yep. Yeah, so the, this is going to be a kit that's getting produced. The uh, first three kits have already been sold. Um, those kit prices were 130000 for everything on the airplane minus the engine, propeller, and avionics. And so that first run will happen, and that'll be kind of a cost analysis to see to make sure we're still on point with the pricing. Um, so more information, uh, supercubs.com, supercub.com, Backcountry Super Cubs, um, kind of two great places. Okay, so all right, so it's Backcountry Super Cub, but if you go to supercubs.com. Yep, it should take you right there. Take you right there, yep. so awesome. All right, well, I hope you thought that was just as awesome as I do. And if you have any questions whatsoever, drop those below in the comments, but really get to supercut.com and you can check out really all the details. But if you have a quick question and you want to converse, perhaps myself or Kyle can jump in in the comments and answer those right now. So until next time, you guys stay safe and be blessed. And I will see you in the next one later.